Hey welcome back everyone just this morning i received a huge parcel from netherlands and it contained some packaging peanuts and an upboard so basically the upboard is a development board and it was initially a kickstarter campaign but for some time now it has been sold as a proper product so they reached to me and they were like hey do you want a review unit i was like yes so it's a development board it's powered by intel atom x5 so it's a very powerful kind of a intel atom processor it's one of the more recent recent one and it's not uh, you know it's not advertised or it's not used as a mobile processor it's built specifically for these development boards so uh, so let's go through the box it was a huge box it contained a lot of accessories so let's go through it what uh, what all we have so first of all, we uh, they gave me uh, an additional USB uh, drive. So it was like one of those visiting cards that you get. So really nice move with those drive, and it had the whole upboard printed on top of it. Uh, so it looks really nice, and you know if you want to keep it in your purse, show it off, something like that. The next up, we got a uh, a 300 Mbps Wi-Fi dongle. So the upboard does not have our own onboard Wi-Fi. But they were nice enough to give a dongle anyways in case I did not have Ethernet. But I'm more of an Ethernet kind of a person. I really do not like that lag. So um, that's nice. Uh, next we got some USB 3.0 OTG cable. Now the upboard actually has uh, USB 3 capabilities but in the form of OTG not in the form of internal USB ports. So the internal ones are USB 2.0. So next there was also talking about the USB 2 ports uh, an extender for the USB ports now it's not a USB hub but it is an extender that plugs into the one of the internal connectors on the board uh, so it gives you an additional two USB ports the uh, next up we also got a 5 volt 4 amp power brick with a plethora of different plug extensions so no matter where you live you would always have uh, it working and uh, of course an HDMI cable and a very simple quick start guide and the upboard itself so let's go ahead and open up the upboard so the upboard had a fairly decent packaging it had a box inside there was like a upboard wrapped around in a black kind of a protective cover and that was that So here is the F board and if you are wondering that it seems very familiar and that is a fact it is very familiar it has the exact same form factor as a Raspberry Pi 2 including the Ethernet and the USB ports. So except for some uh, differences in the positioning of the ports themselves and the type of ports everything else is the same so it, it can basically fit into a raspberry pi uh, case but you would have to drill some holes or modify the ports in some cases i really appreciate the metal back plate uh, it actually makes the board much safer to put on any sort of a surface so if you are buying buying a considerably a costly board like the upboard by the way the upboard starts at around $90 so if you are buying uh, if you are buying a board that costly uh, I mean uh, they should at least in include that if not a case so the model that I have has 4 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of eMMC and the Intel Atom X5 Z8350 clocked at 1.44 gigahertz base and 1.9 boost is pretty standard across all the models the upboard also came with a passive heatsink as you guys would have seen but i was also provided with an additional active heatsink uh, with a fan and all that stuff so uh, here's a look at the uh, bare soc from when i was actually changing so it's look it looks really shiny i really like uh, you know looking at some bare dye uh, I have one um, right here, it's like a graphic card or something. And here's the upboard with the uh, active heatsink installed. 
so that's about it that's what the box had so let's go ahead and boot up the up bow now i have installed windows platform to uh, to perform certain benchmarks it is windows 10 64 bit but we should not discriminate against any kind of operating system doesn't matter how weak the kernel is so uh let's go ahead and the board itself, uh, my initial um, thought was that the board itself is very responsive, it doesn't lag and part of it has to do with the EMMC, so it's a solid state drive, that kind of uh, drives have very fast access rates, so there is very little lag. And um, So uh, I did open up multiple tabs on Chrome and that worked well. Thanks to the 4GB of RAM, I'm not sure how it will work on the lower end models. So uh, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing it won't work that well. So 4GB of RAM seems like a nice place. Um, so one of the tabs had some downloads going on, the other had uh, a Steam website. The third one had a WebGL 3D rendering going on and the fourth one was playing back at Full HD. And at doing all of this, the board was not really at any sort of a load where it would start to lag. It was below the 50 range for most of the time. So now this is a very quick review. So that's about it. I'll leave it here. I'll have at least two more videos uh, dealing with the performance benchmark and running Linux OSs on this board. So that would be interesting. Uh, so don't forget to like, share and subscribe this video. And I will see you guys in the next one.